Oh, yeah. You know what time it is. That's right. It's time for the Eddie and Webby Podcast. <laughs> Yo, I'm going to bust out some theme song action for you. Check it out. The Eddie and Webby Show is the place to be. They're talking about beer and pickleball and technology. So if you didn't know, now you know. Because it's time for the Eddie and Webby Show. On today's episode, Eddie and Webby play a round of disc golf. This is the Eddie and Webby Podcast. Alligator with GPS. A navigator. <laughs> oh, hey, how's it going? This is Webby, not Eddie. And I'm Eddie. And this is our 71st podcast. Oh, yeah. Episode number 71. Yes. Didn't think we'd make it this far, but we're here. <laughs> nope. And not only do we have one guest tonight, but guess what else we have? What? Two guests. No way. And guess what else? No way. What? There can't possibly be more than that. We're doing dinking around with Eddie and Webby after the podcast. What? Nice. That's right. So stick around after the podcast goes down. We're going to be coming right back with dinking around with Eddie and Webby. And we're going to have another special guest on dinking around tonight that I'm really looking forward to uh, hanging out with. Yeah, this is going to be a very fun night. That's right. Uh, for, the, the, uh, for those of you guys that don't know, we are live. We are live on Facebook. We are live on YouTube. And for the three people, yes, I said it, three people that care, we are live on Twitch. Nice, nice. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. That's right. And this is meant to be interactive. So throughout the evening, if you have questions for us, which nobody ever does, but if you have questions for our guests, feel free to throw them down in the chat and uh, we'll be able to talk about them, right? That's right. Yeah, just let us know what's, whatever's on your mind. We'll get to as many questions and comments as we see fit. That's right. A couple of things we want to do before we bring our guests on tonight. The first thing is, Webby, I want to know, what is going on with Twitter? Oh, man. Twitter has just been crazy lately. There's tweets left and right all <laughs> over the place, all over the Twitter sphere. So let's take a look here see what we got going on. Here is a tweet from Mike Dyson. He says, at Eddie and Webby, congrats on the 70th episode. Lindsay Newman Adams was an awesome guest, and I loved the segment where she had to guess the pro players Ben Johns imitated. Uh, thank you for the comment there, Mike. Yeah, that was, that was awesome when she uh, had to guess who all the, thing, all the people that, that Ben Johns was imitating. I thought that was hilarious. That was good stuff. Yeah, she, she was, was great. An awesome, and awesome guest. She did super well, too. Be better than I would have, than I would have you know, if I hadn't made the video <laughs> probably yeah, would have right. done that well yeah she definitely did better than i would have done and yeah. uh because of that we owe her a large blizzard the next time we see her <laughs> that's right but uh all right let's do another comment here on twitter here's one from bill maury eddie and webby please tell us the eddie versus webby series is finally done for good eddie is able to play competitively against pro players while webby looks like a 3.0 player on a good day <laughs> Come on. I feel like I'm at least a solid 3.5 on a good day. <laughs> I, think, I think you're much better than that. Uh, and I don't really know that I would consider myself to be playing competitively against pro players. I think they, <laughs> they, when you have Simone or Dekel as your partner, it makes life a lot easier on the pickleball court. Right? So it makes you look better. You did kind of make Dekel look like a fool in that one clip that you shared on social media, though. <laughs> oh, I, I schooled him one time. Maybe. That's right. <laughs> All right, let's do one more tweet here on twitter here's one from don Ye west the new bad dink reading video eddie and webby did is epic we need more of those in our lives asap well thank you don uh, that's very nice of you and uh yeah that was super super fun segment to work on the uh the bad dink readings we recently did one from the uh the ppa event the uh underground invitational that was a very awesome event and a very fun video to work on so yeah that's it for twitter well, thank you guys very much for the tweets. You can always tweet us at Eddie and Webby. And uh, just like Mike Dyson, you might be able to make it on the, uh, on the Eddie and Webby show, right? That's right. That is correct. But uh, <coughs> I, don't, you, I don't know about you, but my throat is kind of <coughs> dry. 
<laughs> Mine is too. What can we do about that? Um, I actually just so happen to have a beverage right here. Mind if I crack it open and take a drink? Of course, man. I mean, of course, I don't mind. <laughs> so I'm I pretty excited about this mind one. mind that you don't want to. <laughs> All right, I got you, got you. Yeah. I'm pretty excited about this one, though. This is a, a rare one. It's a new one. It's not that easy to find. It's from Bell's Brewery, uh, and it's, it's a version, a new version of Oberon. I don't know if you even knew there was a new version of Oberon, but this one is Mango Oberon. Hmm. from Bell's Brewery that I'm very excited to drink here. Sounds delicious. I'm excited to uh, see what you think of it. What about you? What do you got going on over there? So it's actually kind of funny. This has been in my fridge for a couple of years and I actually forgot about it and the label actually fell off of it. So <laughs> I, I, who knows? Actually, it might not even be the beer that I think it is, but this is Dogfish Head 90 minute IPA. I was actually wondering, have, have we had any Dogfish Head beers on our podcast yet? No, we have not. Well, it's a couple of years old, but 90 minute IPA is one of my favorites. I like 120 minute IPA a little better, but it's harder to find. So I'll definitely be enjoying this beverage for the evening. Very nice. Sounds good. Have you good. had it before? I actually never have. I've, no. I've always heard great things. I've never tried it before, though. But uh, I have had this mango. I, I cheated. I drank some a couple days ago. Um, and it's, it doesn't have as much mango flavor as I expected. I, I enjoy it. But it's almost like a more tame version of Oberon, if that makes sense. Like it's like the the little bit of mango that I do taste. It kind of makes it uh, a little lighter tasting to me than the regular Oberon. But to be honest, that's not that it's not a bad thing on a really hot day. Like it's I I enjoy it quite a bit. So okay. it's good. It's a good one. I, it's not one of my favorites, but I like it. All right, drinking it right out of the bottle. I like it. Only because I forgot to grab my glass. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, I, I think we should bring the gas down. What do you think, Webby? I think that's a perfect idea. So tonight we have not one, but two guests. Both of them have the same name. Well, kind of. It's pronounced the same, just spelled a little bit differently. Both are passionate about pickleball and are ready to talk about the past, present, and future of the PPA, the Pro Pickleball Association. Please welcome Connor Pardo and Connor Ogden. What's going on, guys? What's up? Am I still there? Hey guys, how you doing? I appreciate you having us on. Oh man, we, we, uh, we're very excited to have you on. Uh, there's a lot of huge stuff going on with the PPA, obviously, that I'm super excited to get into. Uh, but I'm hoping that before we do that, maybe we can talk about both of you guys individually. What do you think of that? Perfect. Love it. Yeah. Great. Well, how about during the podcast, I refer to you by your last name, that way, it won't be confusing whether I'm saying Connor or Connor. Sound good? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Eddie, Great. if you can come up with a nickname for me, I'd love it because this whole Connor thing is getting – everybody just thinks we're one person probably working really hard, right? Do, so. do you guys have a name for your, <laughs> for your shared first name, like a, like a Benefer type of thing? No, no it's the same no, name. Just, <laughs> yeah, it's the same name, just Con, Con, I don't know, man. Like, it, right. it is what it is, you know? We'll come up with something here. Good. <laughs> yeah, you, I'm, I'm giving it to you, creative man. <laughs> nice. Uh, well, Pardo, why don't we start with you? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your background in pickleball? Yeah, so um, I started um, getting into pickleball probably around three years ago now. Um, my aunt, she uh, played college tennis down at BYU. My family's a big tennis family, and we all played a lot of tennis growing up. And she kept trying to get us to play this game called pickleball. And like most people, I heard it and I just go, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. You know, I, I'm not going to go play pickleball. And so she kept trying to get me to play. She kept asking and asking and asking, kept putting her off for about a year. And then one night she called me and she said, hey, Connor, I've got a tournament up in Brigham City. It's, uh, you know, the Memorial Day tournament. My partner uh, canceled on me. I'm in the 19 plus division. Will you come play with me? I go, oh, well, maybe that'll be fun. So the very first time I ever played pickleball was in the 3.5 mixed doubles at the Memorial Day tournament in Brigham City. So I went up there. We played the 3.5s. We ended up taking bronze, which was fun. And then I was immediately hooked. I haven't really played tennis since. I could probably count on my hands how many times I played tennis in the last three years. So immediately hooked and, you know, fell in love with the game. How long were you playing tennis before you got into pickleball? So I played from the time I was little all the way up through high school. Um, and then I was playing, you know, recreationally 
about two years after high school. Um, yeah. So I'd been playing for about 18 years. Wow. Okay. Uh, over to you, Ogden. How did you get yeah, into you pickleball? Um, so I actually got introduced to it by my grandma. My grandma's an avid pickleball player. She plays about six times a week, six thirty in the morning. Um, and it's, I, and it's crazy. And so one morning I was, uh, I decided, to, yeah, yeah. And she, uh, she actually got me to wake up one morning and go play with her. Um, and I was getting schooled by all these, you know, 50 plus 60 plus, And I was like, what the heck is going on? Like, am I really this bad? And I had zero understanding of the game. I didn't understand. I was just trying to smash everything. I have a baseball background. And so anything and everything that was just like right, right in my waist, I just wanted to hit it out of the park. You know what I mean? So I'm uh, still working on that dink game and everything else. But, um, and then, you know, after playing with my grandma and stuff, uh, me and Connor kind of met up and we decided, hey, like, let's play pickleball. Let's start playing it a little bit more. Uh, Connor got more into the tournament side of things while I was, you know, still trying to hang with all these tennis guys in this background. And, uh, but yeah, man, we just, you know, like everybody, fall in love with it super fast. Um, it's a great way for me to stay competitive uh, out of high school and out of college and everything else. So it's just, like I said, it's, there's a reason it's the fastest growing sport and everybody has this passionate love for it. Yeah. I mean, you guys basically have told almost the same story that we hear from pretty much everybody mm. about, you know, mm. pickleball. I discovered it, thought it was weird, went out on the court and now I'm hooked. And now I either leave yeah. my, I leave my golf clubs at home. I leave my baseball bat at home. I leave my tennis racket at home. And basically, you know, yeah. most of your recreation is dedicated to pickleball. Is that pretty accurate? Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> yep. Spot on that. So. so what are you guys' rating? We'll start with you, Ogden. Oh, I'm a solid 3-0, 3-5, like right there. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, still trying to get into it. I can, um, I actually, fun fact for you, I've never played in an official tournament. Mm. So, right? So I, uh, you know, we'll go out and we'll play with people that are, you know, in the upper divisions and stuff. And I'll, you know, I'll go out and try to hang with them and stuff like that. But I mean, beside from that pro-am that we did down in Florida at the Underground Inventational, uh, I got partnered up with like Kyle Yates, uh, Deckel, and that was a huge help for me. Uh, we were actually able to beat Connor and some other people a few other times. So, you know, slowly working on that, right? Slowly working on that. Um, if I can just get quads like Ben Johns and a little bit more touch, then it's going to be a win. So I'm just working my way up. Yeah, that, dude, that don't, uh, dude. You should tell everybody how you uh, laid one on Ben Johns and him with the ball. That's my that's my claim to fame, Eddie. I uh, I was able to square one up right at Ben. Only one to get him that day, but right. he got me back three other times. So <laughs> yeah. He got me back three other times. So that's how it, it works. What it is, man. You get, you get humbled really quick. And that's why I like to record all my matches anytime I'm on the court with pros because I'm bound to have like one, one good shot, yeah. and then I just yeah. ride that to the bank because. I know that's the only one I got. I'm not going to show the 10 they got on me, but I'm going to certainly show the one that I got on <laughs> that's them. That's right? right. That's my kind of guy. That's my kind of guy. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's great. So what about you, Pardo? What, uh, what's, your, what's your rating and kind of, you know, what, what's your current pickleball situation? Yeah, so uh, if I play in a tournament, I play with four or five. So definitely um, not where the pros, where the pro players are at, but definitely a good competitive level where, you know, have a lot of fun still. So that's where I'm at. And where do, do you guys normally play together recreationally? Do you play separately? And what, what, what's your, like, what's your venue by where you're at that you like to play at? Yeah. I mean, um, to be honest we, with you, um, oh, go ahead, Connor. I was going to say, sometimes we'll play together, but never on the same team, right? We have the same <laughs> name. So might as well separate the teams a little bit and just keep it competitive and fun, you know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we don't play a ton together. It's fun when we do. Um, you know, we'll get our wives out and we'll play a little bit of mixed doubles a little bit, hit the ball around. I have a court in my backyard, so we play a lot. You know, Connor and I, we're best friends, which makes it fun to work together. Um, so we'll get together. We'll, you know, hit the ball around in the backyard. Um, but as far as um, playing competitively, you know, 
time isn't something that we have a whole lot of right now. We try to get out, at least I try to get out once, maybe twice a week and, you know, play some real pickleball. But uh, yeah, I mean, usually it's just kind of stuff set up uh, with people we know, backyards, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool to be able to have it in your backyard like that. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> I, I don't like to walk the 150 yards to, to my courts in my community. I'd rather just go in my backyard. So. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Totally, totally. That's cool, man. So uh, you said Hoffman get to play once or twice a week is pretty accurate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I wish me. it was more than that. Wish it was yeah. more than that, but is what it is. And so you said <laughs> you guys are our best friends. How long have you guys been friends for? Oh, you take that one, Colin. Yeah. So we actually met each other um, playing sports when we were younger. So. Uh, Connor and I were both, you know, avid athletes. We played sports since basically the time we could walk. So, I mean, we started playing against each other down at the boys and girls club, you know, when we were, you know, barely walking and, you know, out there playing t-ball. Um, so we actually competed against each other basically all the way through until we got to high school. Um, so we played on different AAU basketball teams, uh, different, you know, football teams. And to be honest with you, we didn't really like each other. Um, no. No. <laughs> then um, high school – High school brought us together. Uh, we were able to play on, you know, some high school teams together and, you know, became best friends mm -hmm. in high school and, you know, that's kept that relationship all the way through. Okay. Similar to Webby and I, we met in high school. Actually, this is going to date us, but it'll be almost like 23 years ago that him and I started to become wow. friends. So it's crazy. Oh, check Jeez. that out. It's crazy yeah, to think about. <laughs> yep. We're super old. Um, all right. Moving on from that. Uh, so <laughs> let's jump into the PPA a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. And actually, I have a video question for you guys. And Great. this is from Webby's daughter, Addison. Hey, Eddie and Webby. My question is, how did the PPA get started? Connor? Who wants to take that? So the PPA got started. Um, it's actually pretty, obviously it's been pretty new to the scene, right? We've been trying to really elevate the game of pickleball. And so, I mean, from the time that I played with my grandma and learning a little bit more about the tournament side of things, uh, as I said, I really haven't played in a tournament myself. And so when, you know, the very first tournament that I was able to attend was nationals and nationals kind of set the bar and opened up my eyes for what pickleball can and should be. Um, you know, I see a lot of tournaments in local parks and all these other places, but to see it played on a bigger level and scale, you know, I was like, this is, this is what professional sports are. This is where, this is where this professional sport is. And so me and Connor kind of came up and we're talking with each other and decided, Hey, look, if we want pickleball to grow just as much as anybody, right? Everybody loves it, has the passion that we all talked about with at the beginning, um, but we're like, we want to go to bigger venues. We want to provide more money for our players and athletes. And we want to bring sponsors outside of pickleball into pickleball. Uh, you know, and mm -hmm. part of this was getting, you know, a, a ESPN contract that we recently were able to sign, getting more viewership as far as that goes. Um, we're, you know, we were able to create a great relationship with Jigsaw Health with Patrick and Ashley. Um, and, I mean, everybody in the pickleball realm has kind of seen – hey, you know, these venues that you guys are going to, the prize money and everything that you guys have been able to raise, I mean, that's, that's what we're, you know, that's incredible. And so what we've done is we're really just trying to take pickleball from where it is to the next level, and we believe that's going to be through venues and payout. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you, know, you know, grassroots back to the beginning, um, you know, pickleball, obviously I got hooked in it on the tournament scene and, you know, I actually started playing with my dad. My dad played, you know, division one college tennis. And so it was really fun. It was a fun thing for me and him to be able to do together where, you know, he's 55 years old and he can come play with his son. And quite frankly, quite frankly, he's a lot better than me, you know, so it's, it's a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to be able to play together. You know, we kind of used it as an excuse to travel around, see a few new places. Uh, we also have a very large family real estate firm. So we would go, you know, visit our projects, visit um, different areas throughout the country where we're at. And, you know, we would play pickleball. So we'd use work as an excuse to travel around and go to places like, you know, the Atlanta Open, the Texas Open, you know, the SoCal tournament down at Steve Dawson's place in Bobby Riggs. And I think for us, you know, really being able to see some of these pro players play, 
you know, we looked at the sport and we said, oh my gosh, I, you know, there's something special here. We really think that this is, can elevate. We really think in two, three, four, five years down the road, uh, this sport's really going to be at, you know, a really, really special level. And we said, hey, you know what? You know, we think we're the right people to do it. We think that this is something that we can create. You know, let's go after it. Let's do it. Very first thing I did is I said, Connor, hey, let's go to nationals. I want you to see this. Do you think this is something we can do? And, mm -hmm. you know, we put a, you know, put the, uh, our foot on the pedal and we've just been going full throttle ever since. So it's been really, really fun. We feel really blessed it's to be in the position we're in now. Blast. We're able to secure some really good investors and some really good upfront funding, which really, really helps. Well, that leads very well into the next question I have. And that is from our, our friend, Jennifer Lucor. Hello, Connor and Connor, PPA. Jennifer Lucor here. Got a question for you. I think it's so cool that you created this awesome pro tour and it has lots of prize money, $100,000, $50,000. So my question is, where does that prize money come from? Hmm. hmm. <laughs> no, you're on that one, Tom. I love that. No, I love Beautiful Jennifer. Hat. That's a great question. No, I do. So yeah, no, definitely. So I mean, that's obviously a big question. Where's the, all the prize money coming from? And if you look at pickleball tournaments, you know, uh, up to, you know, the beginning of the PPA, you see a lot of the money is coming, obviously, from the amateur, you know, money that they're paying to play registration fees. Um, we realized that that's definitely not a sustainable model. Um, so we were able to bring a few people into the sport, like Jigsaw Health. Their big coming out party was with us, with the Professional Pickleball Association. Um, and then obviously we were able to secure, um, you know, we've been able to have other sponsors that are able to jump in more so than other tournaments. And then a big thing for us was securing private funding. So we have three big investors that um, all invest, invested pretty heavily in the PPA. And the vision of the PPA isn't where pickleball is right here, right now. It's where is pickle gonna, pickleball going to be in two, three, four years down the road. And so we were able to, um, you know, make our pitch to some guys and say, hey, look at what we're going to be able to do. And we were able to secure a big chunk of um, upfront money, which is obviously helping um, really, uh, really helping us with where we're at now and really helping us grow the sport. You know, it's been able to help us, you know, land ESPN3, which was huge. Um, and then also we have some very, very exciting news that we can't announce yet, but we have some really big sponsors that are coming to the tournament scene in 2021. We've been working really hard on it and people are going to be very happy to see these corporate companies stepping in and, you know, really uh, taking a grab of pickleball. Mm -hmm. That's so great. I mean, obviously for the sport to grow, there has to be a financial backing behind it. And so to see these sponsors want to jump on board, very exciting. And I, I appreciate that you guys are kind of driving that. I mean, you're, you're really pushing it quite a bit within the pickleball world. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a team effort, you know, obviously we love, we're trying our best to do it, but I mean, it's a team effort, you know, as far as if, if pickleball is growing, the PPA is doing better too. So we want everyone to do great. We want all the USAPA regionals to do great. We want all the APP events to do great. We want nationals to do great. We want the U S open to do great. If everyone mm -hmm. else, is, if everyone's doing great, that means we're doing great. And it's a big team effort from everybody. So we appreciate everyone in the pickleball community and all the hard work and love they have for the game because we couldn't do it without them. I mean, really, they're Absolutely. the, they're the Absolutely. ones that uh, really driving the car. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so true. Um, obviously, you know, you mentioned, uh, the APP and then you have some of the bigger tournaments like nationals, us open, um, looking at kind of pickleball as a whole, what mm -hmm. really makes the PPA, uh, different or, or what makes you guys kind of stand out? versus maybe some of the other tournament series that are going on right now. Connor, you want that one or you want me to take um, it? I can take it. That's fine. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I guess like for me, I think the biggest thing that we really try to do is we're really trying to drive people to that center court to watch the pros. So obviously, you know, we have the amateur side of things and we, re we work really hard to make their experience as top line as well. But in hindsight, you know, if we really want this to continue to grow and it, like we said in that four or five year gap down the road, we see the value in the pro tour. And so what we do is we've really been at a lot of time and evaluation into the uh, center court and where things are going on there, whether that be entertainment, whether that be just a smooth transition process. We have prizes that we throw out to people that are able to stick around. 
Um, but we couldn't do that alone. And so one thing that's really helpful as far as the PPA goes is it's a really big team. That's what Connor mentioned. It's not just the Connors. We have a whole, we have a team full of, I mean, we have, I think eight full-time employees now that are working hard mm-hmm. as far as sponsorships. We have event coordinators, um, marketing team. I mean, everybody that's working together that you don't see that's just in the back scene. And all of their hard work and everything leads to this, this venue and uh, this, these tournaments. Um, and where I think the biggest thing that really separates us is we're just, we're just trying to have a good time. We're, we're not trying to have an uptight, well-oiled, I mean, we want a well-oiled machine, but it's not supposed to be a tight tournament feeling. We want it to be more of a loose, hey, this is pickleball, this is that fun atmosphere, because I think that's truly what keeps people attracted to the sport. Um, it's just everybody's very welcoming, social, friendly. And so, I mean, we have plans uh, to help, you know, maintain that atmosphere, um, but also keep it competitive for the pros and everything else. Yeah, I mean, I mean I, I, just to go off what anything. Connor's saying, yeah, no, 100% agree. And, you know, just going after, well, you know, what Connor's saying, a big thing for us too is, um, you know, when we looked at pickleball and we said, hey, where do we want pickleball to go? What are we going to do that's different than these tournaments that are already here? Is we want all of our tournaments to have good prize money for the pros, you know, to have a really nice prize pool. Two, to be at an amazing venue. All of our venues that we're going to, uh, they're actually world-class tennis facilities where we're going in and we're redoing two, three, four tennis courts, turning them into, you know, four to eight pickleball courts, taping off the rest of the courts. We're really going for a really nice center court fill, uh, high-end venues, um, and then we want the entertainment to be great. We want it to be a great experience where, you know, you can play where the pros play. You know, come show up, you know, play your matches, finish your bracket for the day you know, go get a beer, go get some food and come to center court and come watch the best players in the world play. You know, that's really what we're trying to do with the PPA. Yeah. We want you out there, Eddie. We want you out there, man. Right on center court. Well, you can play with the pros now. (laughs) I'll be there. You're not hiding anymore. You're not hiding anymore. (laughs) I don't know if they want to play with me, but I'll I'll take them (laughs) on. Uh, But but one thing I want to say is um, I always appreciate that the, to me, the, the energy and money should be spent on getting the pros at a tournament. A lot of times, mm-hmm. if I'm looking for a tournament to be able to go to, the first thing I'm doing is I'm going and I'm looking, do they have a pro bracket? Okay, if not, then I know what I'm getting into, right? I'm, I'm gonna be getting into a smaller one, which I love, Th- those are fun tournaments to go to and play at. But if there's one that has a pro bracket, all right, now I'm looking at the players. Awesome, now I have you know five or six of the top 20 players in pickleball there. That's going to be so much more incentivizing to me as an amateur player to be able to show up over maybe prize money or, or some of these other things that that's out there to be able to encourage. Um, now, I might be different just because I want to be able to watch the pros play. I get a lot of excitement out of it, but I really appreciate that. No, awesome. I, I think a lot of people are in the same boat as you. I mean, I was the same way, you know. That's one of the reasons why, you know, a couple of years ago, I wanted to go play the Texas Open because I look at there and I see names like Ben Johns and mm-hmm. Kyle Yates and Matt Wright and Lucy Kovalova and, you know, Lee and Annalie Waters. And I go, wow, I, I can't wait to watch these guys play in person. Um, that's mm-hmm. something we're really trying to do. And I think uh, the pros would speak on behalf of us, too. We're really trying to take care of them, we're really trying to incentivize them to come out there. And what we're doing is focused around them. Um, we understand that the sport's going to grow with them. Uh, and we're just grateful for them and them, you know, having them uh, – in, the, in the, all the PPA tournaments. I mean, if you look at all the PPA tournaments on pickleballtournaments.com and you look at that player list, you're going to see those names that I just mentioned right at the top of the list. So we feel very fortunate that they've bought in and, you know, that they understand, you know, uh, where the pro, you know, having a pro tour, where it can elevate the game to. That's great. Another thing too that um, I've always really enjoyed about the PPA is, I'm just going to use the term quality your website, the promotional materials you put out, the commercials that you have filmed and edited, uh, all of it is just such high quality, especially, you know, Webby and I, we really appreciate the video aspect of it. That's Mm -hmm. kind of our passion. The cinematic qualities of the videos that you guys have put out there, highlighting the pros and playing and everything. It's just, I don't know. I I, I love it. And Mm -hmm. I really, really, really appreciate that. Awesome. Thanks. Like we said, we have a, we have a team that works really hard. They're really good at what they do and we couldn't do it without them. So, 
I mean, from, like I said, our marketing team, our videography, everything else, like you mentioned, I mean, we really invest and do our best to put out that quality that you're, you know, that you're speaking of. So thank you for that. It's a, it's a very, very grateful comment. I love that. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, if, you know, a big thing for us is if we were going to do this, we wanted to do it right. And, you know, it took a lot of planning. It took some planning. It took some time to get ready. Um, you know, obviously uh, we wanted to launch right when we had the idea, but the big thing for us is getting our feet under us first and make sure we're doing it all the right way. And, uh, you know, we feel like we've done that so far. Mm -hmm. That's great. Webby, it sounds like there's uh, maybe some questions on the social media front here. Yeah, we're getting some good comments and questions here. And I want to point something out that's uh, very exciting to uh, Eddie and myself and anybody looking down below. We have a legit comment from Twitch, no way. which is always a big hey, deal for us. Hey, there we go. <laughs> and this comes from Gallimore Photography, and they say, awesome, guys. First time tuning in with y'all. So thank you very much for tuning in. That means a lot to thank us. You. We appreciate it. And then uh, we got a, a question here from Sarah Aiken. And she says, are they looking at international venues? Cool. I'll take this one. Um, so we have a really, really special tournament um, coming up in 2021. Um, anyone that's familiar with tennis uh, knows of this venue, um, but it's actually going to be in Toronto, Canada, and it's going to be held where um, they currently have the Rogers Cup in Toronto. Uh, this is an unbelievable, unbelievable stadium, holds like 60,000 people. Grounds are very similar to Indian Wells. It's the premier tennis venue in Canada. And so we actually partnered with Tennis Canada and we're actually uh, co-owners on the tournament. So we're really, really excited about it. It's going to debut um, next year in September. And we're just super excited about where that's going to go. So that's going to be our first international stop. And uh, we think it's a really, really special place. And we're working with a really special group of people. So they're very, very mm -hmm. excited about pickleball and they're wanting to do something uh, extraordinary over there. So we're blessed to be working with them. It's a can't miss stop. Absolutely a can't miss. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty exciting, man. To know that PPA is already going international, <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, so we, we gotta we get should... Steve Deacon to our tournament somehow. You know, <laughs> that's right. gotta get him. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go to him. He, he's not comfortable yeah. coming to us, but we're gonna go straight to him. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. They're doing right. it all for you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> love it. <laughs> uh, so we had reached out on Facebook before the podcast, and we asked for people to send over some questions. And I know Sarah Aiken was is tuning in. Um, she asked a couple other questions and I think the, the next mm -hmm. one is, is pretty awesome. And it's talking about, uh, well, I guess I'll just ask it. How did ESPN and the PPA get together? Ooh, so, okay. I'll kind of set you up for that one, Con. So, I mean, so what happened is, so when we, um, with ESPN and everything, our first tournament was down in Mesa, Arizona and, Carl and uh, Steve Taylor and everybody down there, they did a fantastic job and we're extremely grateful for their production and everything that they were able to put on. And one thing that we were actually able to introduce down at that tournament was commercials. I'm sure you guys all tuned in and saw like Jigsaw Health's commercials and everything else. I mean, they're, they're absolutely comical, but they're, they do a great job showcasing all of their products <laughs> as well. Um, and so, I mean, I just bought one of their shirts, the... Well, the Lucy Kovalova one where she's, right? And so, I mean, they did a great job. And what we were able to do down there at Mesa was introduce these commercial timeouts that actually hasn't happened in pickleball before. And so what we did is, you know, after this happened, we ended up approaching ESPN and showing them, hey, here's the viewership that we were able to obtain on Facebook. Here's the commercial space and everything that we see that's need fit. And... ESPN, you know, Connor, you kind of can take it from there. Um, you kind of were the one that were able to pull in ESPN. Yeah, that's ESPN. kind of our, uh, that's kind of a COVID, uh, a COVID-19 pickleball blessing. Uh, I think those guys yep. had a little bit more time on their hands than they usually do. <laughs> uh, so it was nice. You know, I, we were able to work a contact that we have uh, through tennis uh, at the tennis channel. We started having some conversations there. It led us to ESPN. Um, really, we were able to give them everything we had and they saw it and they go, wow, we're impressed. Uh, we can't believe what you're doing. Uh, you know, it took a long time. I mean, we were in conversations with them since early February or mid-February, yeah. since right when the event ended. Yeah. Um, you know, and then COVID hit, which was, you know, terrible for everybody, but it was great for this aspect of negotiations mm -hmm. and talking to them because it gave them a little bit more time on their hands. And after doing more uh, research, 
we actually, uh, they were able to put a VP on it that actually plays pickleball. Um, so he was able to really push it. And, you know, on, in their words, quote unquote, um, the VP we're working with says ESPN believes pickleball is a sleeping giant. So, you know, they think that it has a lot of potential two, three years down the road. And, uh, you know, we're here and we're going to deliver for them. So that's what we told them. Hey, you know, get on with us. We're going to deliver for you guys. And we're really going to, we're going to bring pickleball to the mainstream. So we're so, we're just so happy to have them on board and have yeah. them behind us. Big, big step. Yeah, for and pickleball. we want to, you know, I, I want to thank everybody that was able to tune into the underground event. We actually exceeded the expectations that ESPN3 set for the mm. standard as far as your average viewership goes. And so everybody was able to tune into ESPN3. Thank you so much. Like, that was that's such a huge help, and it's going to help elevate this sport and get us up to hopefully ESPN1, 2, or U, where it's a lot easier to access than going to your streaming and everything else. So uh, whenever yeah, you we're not going to be able to promise that in, yet, but they're uh, they're wanting to pull. They're looking like they're wanting to pull the trigger on the mainstream next year on one of our tournaments. Mm -hmm. So which is cool. So keep tuning in and watching us. It's it helps us in pickleball. So thank you, thank you so much. Awesome, that's awesome, man. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you you nailed it, Connor, when you said it's a big step. I mean, I, I think you're underselling a little bit. It's a huge step. Getting TV coverage like that is absolutely critical to the future of pickleball. Yeah. And, and you guys brought up the Margaritaville Underground Invitational. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to say, I was very impressed with it. I watched it pretty much live the the whole entire day. There were a couple points I had down in the background, but I mean, it was absolutely incredible what you guys were able to do there. Uh, and before I go on to my question about that, I want to give a huge shout out to my boy, Johnny Pickleball, crushing it on the commentary <laughs> Johnny. game. Johnny, Johnny did absolutely incredible. I mean, you know, I, I'm putting myself in this, in this group of people that I'm talking about, but when it comes to all the pickleball commentators out there, he, he schooled all of us during that event. And I, I'm not just saying that yeah, he he was it. incredible, right? I mean, Johnny's how great was that? Man. Yeah. I mean, even the ESPN guy said, who is this guy and knocked it out of the park. I mean, hundred percent talent knows talent. You're a very talented person. So, I mean, with, for you saying that speaks volumes, he did a fantastic job and we want more Johnny pickleball, you know, to be part of the PPA for sure. Uh, love the guy. So great person. Great. I mean, he's even a better person than how good he did. He's a great, great guy. And mm -hmm. we just, we yeah. really like him. Yeah. He's, He's, he's a great guy, a good friend of mine. Uh, I, I enjoy every time I get to get out on the court with him, although with him traveling <laughs> around doing his shiny pickleball show everywhere, I hardly see him anymore. It's kind of sad. Yeah. I, know. Yeah. I know. He's, he's a road warrior, now, man. man. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about the Margaritaville Underground mm -hmm. Invitational. So mm -hmm. Sarah Aiken also asked us, asked us the question, how did that kind of come about? Like what, what led up to that whole event and kind of talk through that? No one's you, Con. You can yeah. have dealt more with yeah, yeah. and everything. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what was great is we actually um, were approached um, by a group of individuals that actually lives in Fort Myers, Florida. Um, what, the person that I, I was working with, his name is Ryan Sherry. He actually played in the event. Mm -hmm. um, so Ryan had this idea of, hey, we should, uh, you know, put together this event. And... Um, you know, obviously with COVID and everything going on, we had a big gap in our schedule because we've been having to postpone and cancel. And, you know, we thought, wow, this could be an awesome event. One, because Florida is in a great spot for 90% of those players to be able to drive to. Um, two, um, you know, there's not a lot of pickleball going on. Uh, there's not a lot of tournaments going on. Uh, you know, this would be perfect. So really we had the, myself and Ryan, we had the idea of, hey, you know, we really want to put this together. Um, the, and we worked with a group of guys there that actually owned the warehouse where the tournament was put on. We made a bunch of phone calls, secured a lot of sponsorship money, which was very important mm -hmm. in making that happen because there is no registration fees and something like that. Everything is 100% funded from sponsors. So, I mean, we had to pay our players. We had to get players, you know, to be able to travel there. Uh, you know, the expense of creating the court. We actually built the court in the warehouse. Um, we were able to, you know, secure all of that. So, I mean, that was the big thing. Can we secure it? And then we ran with it. I mean, we made it all happen in about less than 60 days. So it was a lot of fun though. As soon as we heard all the yeah. pro players were in, we said, Hey, we're in, let's make it happen. Yeah, that was cool. I'm excited to check out that venue one day. It's only about 40 minutes for me here. Um, talk, talk about the venue a little bit. I mean, it's indoors. 
in an undisclosed mm-hmm. location, right? I mean, you yeah. I don't know, is yeah. it in a bunker? Like, where the is that thing, man? man? The number one rule is you don't disclose the information <laughs> of the underground. It's the That's underground. Right. So, oh, no, it's, it's You're going to have to talk to Ryan Cherry. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. It's a great place, though. Make, make sure to make your way down there. It's worth it. Right. Use those, yeah, it was super use cool. Um, yeah, definitely. So it is in a warehouse. I don't know if I'm supposed to disclose that, but it's in a warehouse. Um, and it was just a really cool. I mean, the, the court, it, it fit in perfectly. Uh, you know, they worked so hard down there to get that place ready. Um, Margaritaville was huge in helping us with setup, bringing things in, really making the whole thing happen. Uh, with them being based out of Orlando, it was just a short drive for them to come down and be involved. Um, and so, you know, kudos to them. We couldn't have done it without those guys. Um, but yeah, super cool venue. Um, you know, we were able to do a lot of fun stuff with it and it was just really, it was just a whole lot of work. I mean, seriously, you don't, you don't have something like that, that runs so smoothly. And that is so great unless people are putting a lot of leg work in a lot of groundwork in. And so we were just lucky to be working with a great team there in Florida that was able to really, you know, put the groundwork in and then leave it to us to get the players there and make the event happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, you, you can tell that there was a lot of work that went into it. Uh, we have a question here again from Sarah Aiken, uh, and she said, "Thought the mix of players in the underground tournament was very interesting. <laughs> How did you pick them?" Uh, we sat in our office <laughs> over lunch. We were eating some tacos, yeah. me and Connor Ogden, nice. and we were just sitting there, what and we tacos. said, "What matchups would we like? What matchups would we like to see?" So Connor would throw some things out. I would throw some things out. We wrote it all down on a piece of paper. Uh, and that's basically what happened. We, you know, <laughs> that's how, that's how it came to be. Yeah. Whatever oh, matches I mean, we thought would be fun. Yeah. And I mean, some of it tied into like the pro players cup. So all of our captains were present mm-hmm. at that tournament. Um, and so, I mean, that was kind of like another consideration, but like Connor said, it mainly was just kind of sitting over, sitting down over some tacos and just throwing together some matches and we wanted to see some other teams. So, I mean, one of my favorite matches was watching, uh, ben and Anna Lee play against Colin mm-hmm. and Lee. I mean, it was like a little family reunion out there. And so <laughs> yeah. we loved mixing it up a little bit and seeing that. And, you know, it was just a fun event. It was a great atmosphere. Uh, obviously, we took all the safety measures and everything necessary. Um, but, I mean, overall, it was just a fun event. It was fun to get back to pickleball. And, I, you know, I think we all just had a great experience. So it was a, it was a lot of work, but it definitely paid off. Yeah, it was fun just kind of trying to put some matchups together that we thought would be competitive and that also the players would enjoy as well. Lots of input from the players. I mean, uh, it's not something that we could just chuck down. We had to get a lot of uh, their insights and what they wanted to do and really trying to cater to them to make sure that, I mean, the event's all about them. So we want to make sure that it's uh, what they wanted um, at the end of the day. So That's great. You uh, brought up the Pro Players Cup. Uh, and I'm kind of fascinated mm-hmm. by this, and I'm hoping you can kind of explain where the idea came from, but also for those mm-hmm. that don't know, what is the Pro Players Cup all about? Yeah, I'll take this one. So uh, the credit for the Pro Players Cup definitely comes from uh, one of ours. His name's Perry, uh, avid tennis player, uh, played on the ATP tour, everything. Uh, and he loves world team tennis. I don't know if you've seen world team tennis, um, but he's a big uh, a team sport guy. And so uh, we thought it would be fun to put a team event together um, to play at our three big tournaments that we play every year that have the $100,000 payouts. Um, So what we did is we took three guys and we took three girls. So we took Matt Wright, Ben Johns, Kyle Yates, and then we took Simone Jardim, Lucy Kovalova, and Lee Waters, and we made all of them captains. And then we did a lot of work. We reached out to all the players and said, hey, do you want to play in this, uh, you know, this team cup? Uh, the teams, they're all going to consist of two male pros, two woman pros, one senior male, and one senior woman. Uh, you know, we're not going to be picking the teams. The captains are going to be drafting the teams in Mesa at our first tournament. Would you like, would you like your name to be available? Um, basically, everybody said yes. We left it up to the captains to choose their team. We had a fun little draft night where we invited our sponsors over, the players over. We had a nice draft board that my wife made. And we had our version of the uh, NBA draft right there in the backyard of our Airbnb. It's like fantasy football. It's a lot of fun. It's like fantasy football. So, yep, they had 30 seconds. They were on the clock. Matt Wright had to figure out who we we wanted to choose. It was a lot of fun. So the way the Team Cup's going to work is it's going to be played like a normal tournament. 
So you're going to have six teams. Two teams are going to have buys. Those are going to rotate at each tournament. So the very first one is actually going to be held in Newport, which is going to be fun. It's going to be on ESPN3. It's going to be Friday evening. It's going to start at um, 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Pacific. And um, basically what happens is we'll have like Team Reich going up against Team Johns. And so Matt has six players on his team. Ben has six players on his team. There'll be three matches that happen. A men's doubles match, a women's doubles match, and a mixed doubles match. And Matt and Ben can mix and match their teams any way they want. So Matt's not going to know who Ben has chose. Ben's not going to know who Matt has chose until the, we tell the people to report to the courts. Whatever team wins two out of the three matches will move on to the next round. The loser will fall down into the loser's bracket. And so this is going to be an ongoing thing at three tournaments. Uh, the finale will be played in Vegas. And then the pros will get paid out accordingly, depending on where their team finishes, one through six. Right. Everyone makes money. Uh, obviously, you make a lot more money if you win it, but a lot of fun. That's pretty exciting, man. Uh, Webby, did you get your request to be part of the draft? Because I, I, they must have got lost in the mail. <laughs> I didn't get mine. Yeah, you have to have somehow a I, I didn't. I didn't seem to see anything. <laughs> I don't know what hey, the deal is with that. My name was on the board, and I didn't even get drafted. So. <laughs> No, they I'm didn't even kidding. know who you were yet. It was the first time. They didn't even know who I was. Yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. I'm the dark horse. They just don't know it yet. That's great, man. <laughs> um, so you mentioned... Yeah, we're excited about it. It's going to be fun. Yeah. You, uh, you, you mentioned the next event. Um, and what, what are the dates for the next PPA event you guys have going on? It's August 13th through the 16th. And that's going to be at the tennis club at Newport Beach. That's exciting, man. And we're going to be able to see it on ESPN3 again, right? Correct. Correct. We'll be on ESPN3 eight hours each day. Uh, Matches will be starting at uh, 10 o'clock Pacific time each day. Um, Besides besides, um, Friday, that'll be the Pro Cups. It's going to start a little bit later. Um, So we'll have uh, singles on Thursday. We'll have the Team Cup on Friday. Rest for everybody else. Saturday will be gender doubles and then Sunday will be mixed doubles. Um, but yeah, we just feel really fortunate to have this event. We've had to do a lot of juggling around. We feel bad that we had to cancel the amateur part of the event. Um, unfortunately it was just going to be too hard to manage getting close to a thousand players. Um, so, but we're excited that we're able to keep the pro event on. Uh, it's going to be a great thing for the pros. It's going to be top level pickleball. And, uh, we're just excited that pickleball is going to be able to come back to the tournament scene and, uh, we're going to do it safely and as responsibly as we can. So I know that we don't have a whole lot more time with you guys here, but there's still a couple more topics that I would like to talk about. And you kind of just touched on it a little bit, and that is the effects of COVID. I mean, obviously, it's mm-hmm. changed everyone in the world's plans, right? And mm-hmm. I'm sure with pickleball, it's obviously played a role in where you, where the PPA is at right now. Can you talk a little bit about kind of how it's impacted the PPA and, and maybe what the future is going to look like in this kind of new climate where COVID is, you know, part of our world. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, honestly, you're, you're, you know, you're talking to the wrong people as far as the COVID team. I mean, we all come together, we work together as a whole PPA staff, right? We come together. Our number one priority is safety for their players. We believe that, You know, by cutting down to pros only with the amount of courts and everything that we're able to do, the safety measures in place, working with local government officials and everybody, that we can provide a tournament atmosphere that is not just competitive and fun, but it's also safe. If we didn't feel, if we felt like we were going to be a threat to any of our other players or staff, anybody there, we wouldn't move forward with this because, as I mentioned, you know, COVID is our number, you know, our safety is the number one priority for us. Um, obviously pickleball is something that we're all missing and want to get back to, but, you know, unfortunately we had to cancel the amateur side of things, but we do feel like we can still execute a professional level tournament with the pros, with the amount of players, there's, uh, nine acres that are actually available at Newport beach to spread out. Um, you know, we'll have our safety measures and guidelines in place. Uh, each individual, you know, participant there will actually receive those guidelines and be well aware of it going into it, the tournament. So there won't be any surprises or anything as far as that goes. And, you know, we're just, you know, I don't think any of us are COVID masters or I'm not a doctor. Connor's not a doctor. Nobody is. 
we're just doing our best to kind of follow the safety measures and guidelines and, you know, provide a fun, safe pickleball tournament for, you know, everybody that's out there. Yeah, I mean, it's a point where us where, you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there that want to get back to the tournament scene and want to, you know, move forward with life. But it's how do we do it in the right and responsible way? Um, you know, one safety measure that we took is we actually brought on a full time member just dealing with COVID. So her name's Christy Winder. She actually used to work for the New York Knicks, which is pretty cool. Um, she's done some uh, part time event stuff for us. And we actually brought her on full time. Uh, she manages, you know, the events on championship court. And she's also managing all of our COVID policies and procedures. Um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, we want pickleball to move forward. We're going to do the best we can to make it as safe as we can. But if anyone feels uncomfortable, we urge them to stay home. I know that there is a few of the top pro players that aren't going to be making the trip out like uh, Lee and Annalie Waters. They decided that they didn't want to do it. And we 100% support them and we understand where they're coming from and we back their decision to not come. Um, but, you know, the other 200 pros or 150 pros that want to come out and play, uh, you know, we support their decision as well. So it's just a balancing act. And, you know, I think everybody in the entire world, we're all just trying to do the best we can and, you know, take, take a step forward. Oh, I think, I think you kind of have to, and I, and I like the approach and I think most people are going to understand why you had to get rid of the amateur side of it and mm -hmm. just focus on the pros. And, you know, mm -hmm. from, from those of us that are not going to be at the events, the fact that it's going to be, you know, available to watch via ESPN three is absolutely incredible as well. So I don't mind being at the comfort of my own home, having good pickleball on. <laughs> There's a lot of pros to that. There's a lot of pros to that. That's for sure. Yeah. Pop your own popcorn. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, can drink as much as I want and have to worry about uh, making yeah. a mess out of myself at these, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you want to worry about Jeff Warnick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love it. Um, so, you know, I kind of mentioned a little bit. I want to talk about the the future of the PPA. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, twenty twenty, even going through the end of the year. There's so many unknowns. So I have to assume that the focus is kind of like, okay, six month outs, we have an idea of what we want to do, but really planning heavily for 2021 and beyond. Is that, is that a fair assessment of kind of how things are going right now as far as scheduling looks? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, really, we're trying to push through the rest of this year and hope that a vaccine comes out and that, you know, leave, the, leave it to the professionals, you know, to you know, try to manage COVID and kind of see where the world goes from now. Obviously, it's something we're going to have to live with and we're going to have to, you know, learn and understand. And, you know, a big thing for us right now is also tournament by tournament. You know, like right now we're focused on Newport. Uh, and then as soon as Newport ends, we're going to move on to Atlanta. I mean, we've been having conversations about it. That one might also go to a pro only tournament. Um, it really depends on, you know, the private club where we're holding it, you know, how our ownership group feels and then also how the local state authorities feel. So we have to have the green light from all three people, you know, for us to pull the trigger. So fortunately in Newport, we were able to make it happen and it's the plan for Atlanta and it's the plan for Vegas and it's the plan for Texas Open to hold the tournaments, um, you know, to the best that we can. And if, you know, at the end of the day, if we can't hold them, we can't hold them, but we're going to do everything we can to try to hold them responsibly. All right. Well, I only, uh, I know we only have a couple more minutes with you guys here. Uh, mm -hmm. So I wanted to kind of talk about, you know, if, if people, want to stay updated on what's new with the PPA, what are the rankings, uh, you know, what's going on with the pro players cups, uh, are, are there good ways for them to be able to tune into any media you have now or anything coming up in the near future? Yeah. I mean, I think the best way to kind of keep in contact with us and stay updated on the latest stuff is going to be our Facebook page. Uh, so, I mean, Professional Pickleball Association, I think we're just north of 5,000 followers now. So everybody that's been following us, great. Uh, tell your friends and everybody to follow us. We also have an Instagram. Um, you know, we've been posting there and everything as well. Everything that gets posted on our Facebook goes to our Instagram. Um, but, I mean, another great way to actually get a lot of information as far as, like, your rankings and your pro player cup is actually becoming a PPA member. Um, for 2020, this is actually free. You just go on, you input your, it's, I think it's your email, your phone number, and this gives you access to all of the rankings, more information on the Players' Cup and everything. So, I mean, if you're looking for a lot more in-depth, it's kind of like an all-access, per se, to become a PPA member, um, and this will allow you to see more in-depth of what's going on with the PPA, aside from Facebook and Instagram. 
Yeah, you'll be able to go on and you'll be able to see rankings, you know, one through 100. You know, you'll be able to see me at 99 or something like that. No, just kidding. But you'll be <laughs> no, able to go on. No you'll be way. able to look at all the players. No You're going to be able to see where they're at. Um, and then, you know, the website's great. We've got blog posts where we're always, you know, upkeeping things. It's propickleballassociation.com. Uh, you can jump on there. It's going to show our COVID guidelines. It's going to show, you know, our next tournaments, uh, where the PPA is. Uh, it's going to have fun highlight videos. We're going to have a really cool highlight video coming out in a day or two of the, you know, from the underground. Uh, you can see sponsors, you can see everything like that, but we just appreciate all the support in the pickleball community. We couldn't do it without you guys. And we just love being part of this fun, fun game. I mean, we just feel super blessed to be where we're at and to be able to do something that we love so much and that we're so passionate about. And I feel like so many pickleball people are on the same page and it's just the greatest group of people in the world. And we're just so blessed to really be, you know, a part of that tight knit community. Mm -hmm. That's, that's awesome. It's great to hear. Uh, Webby and I definitely feel the same way. So it's such a fun community and family to be part of. <laughs> uh, and, and we really want to thank both of you for coming on the podcast today, talking about the PPA and all the great things that's going on there. Um, is there anything else you want to share with the world here uh, before we say goodbye? We want to play you uh, two in pickleball. When are we playing, man? <laughs> yeah. Let's do, do it, too. man. Do too. Challenge I mean, you guys hit every ball to Ogden. If, if you want to win, you just hit every ball to Ogden. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, oh, dude. You're, I'll just try to poach like trap. I'm Ben John. Don't lead dude. him into that trap. Don't lead him into that I'm trap. Totally <laughs> down. I am totally down. Let's yeah, add this to the we, list. Yeah, we need to play for so many challenges. <laughs> How about me and Webby will play? Me and Webby will play with each other. We'll take on you supposed pros, right? Let's do it. Dude, we just hit you the ball. We'll just... I'll just hit you the ball, man. Hey, I'll just freaking <laughs> you got that, bat, Webby's got that Florida, You've man. just a little bit. You don't even know what's in my arsenal. Mm. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> Until you see you swing like a baseball bat, dude. <laughs> Home run every time, dude. Home run every time. But no, it's I just... Those things, uh, you I, guys, like when you go out to the court and you see two people hitting and then you can just see from them warming up, you're just like, oh, I'm going to hit him every ball. That's, <laughs> you know, that's how it is with Connor. Yeah, but then it's that rare case where that guy actually beats you, and you're like, how did I let this guy beat me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, I just, I just want to say thanks to everybody, and just, you know, watch out for Newport. I mean, it's coming up in two weeks. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, go on to ESPN, figure out how you can find that streaming, and tune in, you know, support our players and everything else. I mean, they're, they're just as bummed as we are that the atmosphere isn't going to be that fun electric, you know, that you feel at these big tournaments. But, I mean, if we can have everybody's support by, you know, going on to ESPN, tuning in and watching this, I mean, that, that speaks volumes, and that's a great way to show us your support and everything as well. So, uh, you know, thanks again, and, you know, we couldn't do it without you guys. So, you know, we're just really grateful yeah, for everybody. Yeah, in all that honesty, really us. Mm -hmm. in all honesty, the more people that we can get to come behind and, you know, really back, you know, the PPA, this professional pickleball tour, the better it is going to be for the sport of pickleball. Um, you know, the more fans, the more amateurs, the more pros. I think a lot of people are starting to understand this. The more support that we have, the more sponsors we're going to be able to bring in, the more exposure we're going to be able to bring to the support, strength in numbers. So, uh, you know, we'd love for everyone to get, you know, behind us and let's continue to grow pickleball. Let's all do it together. I know we, we always say it, but let's continue to grow the sport. And we just love Eddie and Webby because that's what you guys are doing. You guys have been doing it for what? How many shows? 79? Right. 71, 71, dude. 79 baby. shows, man. 71. You've been doing it for 79 71. 71. 71 shows, man. That's incredible. That's incredible. In eight weeks, it'll be 79. That's right. Art, the number of shows we have is the average age of the pickleball player out there. So, <laughs> yeah. There we go. There we go. We're trying to change that. We're trying to change that. So, <laughs> That's right. start over. Yeah, but start no, over. we really do want to play you guys two on two, man. We'll get a little doubles game. Hopefully, we'll come out to you guys. We'll come up to Michigan. <laughs> oh, nice. We'll Challenge accepted. We'll provide drinks Challenge and everything. Accepted. <laughs> Sounds good. Let's do it, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, guys. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Thanks again. Yeah, we'll throw links you. down below to all the websites and everything you guys talked about tonight. Have a good night. We'll awesome. see you guys soon. It's a pleasure. Thanks. 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 Oh, man. That, how cool was that? That was very, very cool. You know, I mean, we've been having uh, pretty consistently just having pro players on for the last, I don't even know how many episodes in a row. Uh, so I think it was cool to to really kind of switch it up, get the perspective of the two Connors kind of leading the way with the PPA. Uh, you know, I was really curious about a lot of the questions that were asked tonight. And, uh, and I think it was, it was just great to get their perspective. Oh, for sure. 
I agree. And I just, yeah, I, I love what they're doing. The, the pro tour thing that's happening now is such a great thing. Something that is definitely needed for the sport of pickleball to grow. And the fact that they've got the deal with ESPN three, and they even said like, it's been such a, such a success that like it's could get, could get a uh, upgraded to ESPN two or even one next mm-hmm. year or in the next couple of years. I mean, how awesome is that? Yeah. I mean, that's, you can't beat that. Getting that kind of exposure uh, is, it, it's just, it's, cre- it's key for the sport. To be able to grow the sport, you have to get televised. And to be televised, yep. obviously, you have to get connected with the right people. But you also mm-hmm. need to have good talent out there. And obviously, what we saw at the Margaritaville Underground Invitational, the talent is there, and it's only getting better from here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'm excited. I love the fact that we're witnessing all this. Like we're, I feel like we got into the sport at such a great time because it was like <laughs> right, right during the transition phase of it becoming something nobody's ever heard of to becoming this awesome pro sport that everybody knows of. <laughs> I agree. I mean, it's, it's all over the place. You're seeing it, you know, more frequently in pop culture. A lot of people out there playing it. Uh, celebrities. I mean, Ellen DeGeneres just talked about it. What a month ago, six weeks ago. I don't know. Yeah. Ever since COVID happened, like my frame of reference of time is gone. I don't know if it was a week ago or like <laughs> three months ago. You know. Well, I was watching uh, an episode of Jimmy Kimmel Live recently, and uh, a viewer submitted a, a question, and they mentioned how they got injured playing pickleball. So I mean, it, it's working its way into uh, pop culture here and there. It even. It was on uh, Family Guy. I think we talked about that last year. It was mm-hmm. it was mentioned on Family Guy. So I mean, it's getting there. And uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, he's a big time pickleball yeah. player. He's got a, a court in his home. Well, did I you mean, see it's, that it's really uh, that Doug Allen? Uh, he has a podcast with. Oh my God, I'm spacing on his name. The guy that played Johnny Drama in Entourage, which which was the show that Doug Allen was the producer of. Um, yeah. it's called Victory the Podcast, and they were one of the sponsors of the Margaritaville Underground Invitational. Did you see that on the wall back there? I did. Yep, I did see that. And I know that Doug Allen, he's a big time pickleball player. So, I mean, it's the more, I feel like the more celebrities get involved. Uh, We talked about the Kardashians, keeping up with the Kardashians has had a couple episodes that dealt with pickleball. So, I mean, more and more people are going to have it. And uh, we just got a a message from Tracy McKenna. And uh, she said the Goldbergs had it on. That is correct. They also... Uh, mentioned pickleball on the Goldbergs, which is a, a TV sitcom. So yeah, it's it's getting there. It's getting pop culture, man. I love it. It's so cool. Great interview. Uh, big shout out to the Connors for jumping on. Uh, that that was my first time ever actually like talking with them. Uh, I Connor and I, Connor Pardo and I, have emailed in the past leading up to the Easter Bowl that we were doing that kind of Simone hosted, but we've never really talked to interacted before. And uh, that was cool. It was a uh, they got a lot of energy, super passionate about the sport, and it's great to see. Yeah, awesome stuff. And uh, I love the fact that we have uh, a new challenge issued. I feel like everybody that comes on our show wants to destroy us on the pickleball court. <laughs> well, I, I think it's because they think, oh, easy win. We can take on right. Webby. And yeah. it's because they probably watched the video of Kyle Yates destroying us over a right. year ago. But guys, that was over a year ago. Webby and I have been yep. working our asses off to get better. And so don't you think that we're going to be some hacks out on the court like we were over a year ago? Because that's not happening. That's right. In fact, recently, Annalie Waters challenged us to uh, a two versus one match at next year's Beer City Open. Yep. And I, I kind of feel bad for Annalie Waters because she doesn't <laughs> know what she's getting herself into. <laughs> I th- yeah, uh, she's still going to kick our butt. That's okay. <laughs> oh, and then not to mention... Uh, that that young kid, uh, Ben Johns, I think his name is. He's he's so confident he thinks he can beat us in a two versus one match where he uses a spatula against us using pickleball paddles. I mean, people just uh, they don't know they don't know how much we've improved, man. Ben who? Ben John Johnson? Ben Johnson? Hmm. I don't know Ben Johnson. Ben James or something? <laughs> I forget what his name is. But anyway, nobody nobody knows who nobody's ever heard of him. Yeah, some wannabe. Ah, great show. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Wanted to do a little change of pace and mission accomplished, I think. Yeah, I thought that was great. I loved it. It was great having them on. Uh, but guys, we have another guest coming up soon. Once this show ends, we're going into what I think is episode 26 of Dinking Around with Eddie and Webby. If my calculations are correct, I think it's episode 26. Boop, 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 boop. And uh, 
We've got the paddle geek, Brandon Swanson, joining us. So you're not going to want to miss that because that's coming up real soon. That's right. Is there anything else that we wanted to talk about on this wonderful evening, Webby? Before we, I don't think so. I think that was a, I think that was a great episode, and uh, I think that's going to do it for episode seventy-one. Well, guys, stick around. We're going to go dark. Come right back up with dinking around with Eddie and Webby, and we want to thank all seventy-one of you listeners out there because this is episode number seventy-one. We love you to bits. Thank you for tuning in. And on that note, I'm Eddie. And until next time, this is Webby, not Eddie, signing off. So, yep.